In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a searchable drop down list in Excel. So, you probably already know how to create a drop down list. You can do that by going to the Data tab and going to Data Validation and choosing a list and then adding your list items and pressing OK. And let's just scroll up to the top here. And now we've got a list with all our items in it. So in this case, job titles. But the problem with this is if you have a big list, it's going to be hard to find exactly what you're looking for. So in this video, we're going to learn how to create a drop down list based on a search item. So if I do something like this and type in manager and now use my drop down list. Now I've only got the manager items in my list and that's going to make it a lot easier to find exactly what I'm looking for. So let's take a look at how we set this up. So I've just deleted everything so we can build our searchable drop down list from scratch. So I'm just going to type in something here. So I'm going to go back to my manager and that way we can just see some results as we're building this thing out. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the search function. So the search function allows us to find a small piece of text within a larger piece of text. So if I type search, then that's going to prompt me to enter the text that I want to find. And in this case, it's going to be my drop down list location. And I'm going to press F4 and turn that into an absolute reference. And then the next argument in our function is what text do we want to search within? So that's going to be our job title. So if I select our job title and close that off and just copy that down. Now some of these are going to be errors. So that's where we weren't able to find manager in our job title. And then some are going to get a value here. So here I've got 16 and we can see that I've got manager in this job title right there. And 16 actually refers to the location of the first character of manager. So that's the 16th character there. Now, what I actually want here, instead of 16, I just want a zero when it's not found, so when I get an error value, and a one when it's found, regardless of where it's found in the string. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wrap this in an if function, and then if this is an error, so I'm going to use my is error function and close that off. Then I want a zero and otherwise I want a one. So we're going to take that and copy that down. And now I've just got a one whenever I've got manager there. So you can see here a couple examples and then zero everywhere else wherever I don't have manager in that string. Now I'm just going to insert another column here and this is going to be our index column. And here what I eventually want is just an indexing of all the items that have manager in it. So my first item here I just want one and then here I'll want a two and then here are three etc all the way down the list. And to do that what we're going to do is use the max function and if we type out max here what we're going to take the maximum of is our previous indexes. So if I reference the top cell there and a colon, and I'm just going to close that off. And also I'm going to turn the first part of this into an absolute reference. So press F4. And now if I copy that down, oops, and also add in this value here and copy that down again. I can see that I get exactly what I want. So here, if I just look at what's happening in this formula, I'm taking the maximum of all the previous zero values and then adding one to it here. And then I go to my next value with manager in it and I'm doing the same thing, taking the maximum of all those previous values and I've already found one manager. so my maximum is one and then I'm adding another one to it to get two as my next index number. 
Now we're going to use this index number with a VLOOKUP so that we just return our results with manager in it. So here I'm going to create a lookup column. And this is just going to be a simple index column. And it's just going to go from one down to however many total uh, items I have in my data. So one, two, and I'm just going to fill that down with the fill handle. So it's just a simple index, one, two, three, all the way down to the last item in my set here. And oops, that didn't fill all the way down. So there we go. And now if I use VLOOKUP with this as the lookup value, and my lookup range is my index and my job title. And let's lock that down. And then we're looking up the second column, so the job title. And we're going to do an exact match here. And now if I fill this down, notice that I got all my manager titles up here until this value here. And then after that, it's just a bunch of errors. So if I scroll down here, I get a whole bunch of errors. And that's because I'm not finding any more manager positions. So index number 64 doesn't exist in this list, so it returns nothing. Now we don't want errors in there, so let's just wrap this in an if error statement. And so it's the VLOOKUP value, otherwise it's uh, empty string. And let's just copy that down. And now I've got my list of items that I want in my drop-down list. So in this case, it's uh, 63 items. But if I type in something else, so something like that, I get a different number, so 31. So what I want to create is a dynamic range that I'm going to use for my drop-down list. So regardless of what I'm looking up, I'll always have the exact range of items. And now I can get the number of items that I'm going to need in my drop-down list just by using a max function. So if I do that on my index column here and press enter, in this example, I've got 31 items in my list. So now what we're going to do is create a dynamic range based on this. So if I go up to my define name, what I'm going to do is use the offset function. And now this name manager up here in the formula tab, uh, when you type a function, it's not going to prompt you all the inputs that you need. So I'm just going to escape out of this. And up here, if I do this offset, and if I use the keyboard shortcut Control, Shift, and A, that's going to give me the arguments I need in my function. And I'm just going to have that there to remind me while I'm using my name manager. So back up to define names in the formula tab and offset. Now the first argument is the reference we want. And in our case, we're going to take K4 as our reference. And now we, we don't need to offset this, so our next two arguments are 0. So we're not offsetting this reference by any number of rows or any number of columns. And the height that we want is going to be our number of items that we want in our list. And width is just going to be 1. It's a one column list. Now if I close that off and give this a name of something like job list and press OK, then I can see up in my name manager that it's just referencing that list of jobs. If I close that out. So now if we try something else in here and go back up to our name manager and edit that and just take a look at what range we have. 
you can see that we've got a smaller range now and it's just the list of items that contain the word account so it looks like our dynamic range is working correctly now we just need to go up to our data tab and data validation and create a drop down list so if we go to the settings tab and pick our list now all we have to do is reference that job list range that we just created and press OK. And now when we try and use our drop down list, we do end up getting an error because fire is not a, uh, an item in our job list. So what we need to do is go back into our data tab and data validation. And we just need to go to this error alert and click on this. So un uncheck the show error alert after invalid data is entered. And now we can use our search field here. So if we enter fire and use our drop down list, now we get all the job titles that contain the word fire in it. So that's how we can create a dynamic searchable drop down list in Excel. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next one.